Today we'll take a look at Quart, which is the asynchronous evolution of Flask. It's developed by the same organization that is behind Flask and it supports natively modern web technologies like WebSockets, HTTP2, request streaming and more. If you like this video, let me know by hitting a like button and subscribing. But now, let us get right into it. All right, so two things right away. One, this is not a crash course. I'm not teaching Quart today. This is more like an introduction or showcasing of Quart's features as well as USPs. Two, to some degree, I will be comparing Quart to Flask. Even though it's not a necessity, it probably will be more interesting to you if you have worked with Flask before, and I'm going to assume some familiarity with it. But of course, this video can be interesting for everybody. Now, before we start talking about the special features of Quart, I wanna show you how similar it is to Flask and how easily you can migrate your applications. Now, this is a very simple application. What we have here on the left is a Flask application. We create the app. We have a simple route with Hello World. We also render a template here, which is an HTML page. And then we just run the application in debug mode. On the right side, we have the exact same application, but in Quart. As you can see, the only thing we have to change is we have to change Flask to Quart and we have to add async and await. You can see every function here is asynchronous and we cannot just return render template. We have to return await render template. Besides that, both applications are the same and produce the exact same behavior, except of course for the fact that every worker in Quart is going to be asynchronous. Also, this is not just limited to very simple applications. We can basically use all the features we know from Flask in Quart as well. For example, on the left side here, I have a Flask application. Maybe let me use the full screen here with blueprints. I have first and second. I have this routes pie where I have a basic hello from first blueprint, a basic hello from second blueprint. Then I have here the blueprint definition with Flask blueprint. And down here I have an init file where I create the application and I register the blueprints. The exact same application is possible in Quart as well. The only difference is of course we have asynchronous routes. So you can see here the async def. And of course we say Quart blueprint, not Flask blueprint. Besides that, everything else stays the same and we can work with blueprints in Quart as well. In addition to all this on the website of Quart, it also says like Flask Quart has an ecosystem of extensions for more specific needs. In addition, a number of the Flask extensions work with Quart as well. So while this is not the case for all extensions, we can already use part of the existing Flask ecosystem in Quart as well. But let's now take a look at what Quart is capable of. For this, I'm going to use UV to initialize a new project. I'm going to say UV at Quart, and then I'm going to open up an app.py file. In here now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import async IO, I'm gonna import from Quart Quart, and I'm going to import WebSocket. Now I'm not going to go too deep into this today, but WebSockets are basically allowing us to have a bi-directional communication. So we can talk to the server, the server can talk back. And this is very useful if we have something like multiplayer games or something like a chat application. Our simple example here, will just take a user message and send back you said whatever the message is. We're also going to serve a static HTML file, which will interact with our backend in JavaScript or using JavaScript. And we're going to also run the application. So let's now go ahead and create a new directory static index.html is going to be the file in it. And it's going to be quite basic. We just have a basic JavaScript here, which opens up a connection to this WebSocket and sends something that the user inputs to this WebSocket and then shows the answer. So all we have to do now is we have to say uv run app.py. This is going to run this on localhost port 5000. If I click on this, it will open up this website. I can open up the developer console here. And if I go to the network tab, you will see that nothing is going to happen here. All of this this will happen via WebSocket. So if I type something like hello, enter, it says you said hello, but there's no request here. Nothing is being sent as a request to the server as an HTTP request because we're using WebSockets. So all of this is happening on a JavaScript level and I can now just type stuff and I will get the answer from the server. Now, of course, just displaying this would also be possible client side, but what we're actually doing here is we're sending stuff to the server. The server is answering and we're getting this answer and rendering it into the HTML. So in a nutshell, Quart natively supports WebSockets. We don't need extensions. In Flask, I think we would have to use something like Flask Socket IO. Here we can just say app app.websocket and it works. If I may for a second, I would like to plug myself in as the sponsor of my own video. If you go to my website, neural9.com, you will find a tab services and a tab tutoring. Here you can hire me for all sorts of stuff like data science, machine learning, web development. If you need help with something in a project, 
here you can book me for one on one tutoring if you want me to teach you personally something that you don't understand. If you like my teaching style on both pages at the bottom, you can contact me via mail and also via LinkedIn. Just wanted to let you know about this. Second example, server sent events. What we're going to do here again is we're going to import Quart and we're going to import the response class. We're also going to provide a static folder again. Then the interesting part is gonna be an asynchronous stream. So we're going to yield results and we're going to have server sent events. So we're going to send events from the server to the client and we're going to do all of this asynchronously. So we're not blocking a threat because we're sleeping or something. We have here an asynchronous SSE. Basically, we just have an endless loop where using asyncio.sleep1 and we're just yielding some data which is just a counter that keeps increasing. To actually serve this we're going to use this events endpoint it just crafts a response that is based on the stream the content type here is important text slash event dash stream and then again we're going to serve a static index file so we can interact with this using JavaScript. So into our HTML file we're going to put this we just have a pre-formatted tag here with connecting by default and then we're just going to render the text that we get from the server via SSE via the server sent event. We're going to just render it into this preformatted tag. By the way, if all of this is too fast for you, you will find a link to the code in the description down below on my GitHub. I'm just rushing through this because this is not a tutorial. As I said, I'm just showcasing what we can do with Quart. So let's save this and let's say uv run app.py. Now I can click on this. I have to reload and now we see count one, two, three, I'm not doing anything. And if I go and open up the inspect menu here, if I go to network, nothing is happening here either. However, if I go to console and terminate the server, so if I close this, you're going to see that I'm going to get an error message here, which says error incomplete chunked encoding connection refused, I can no longer get the SSE. Now for the next example, we're going to use HTTPS or to be precise, we're going to use HTTP2. And for this, I have a certificate and a key. I'm not going to show how to generate this. Again, we're optimized here for showcasing court features. But basically, you have a key pair that allows you to do the connection over TLS, then we'll go into our app PY file. And what we're going to see now is how we can do request streaming. So how can we upload files in chunks, for example, video files, via HTTP2. For that, our imports are going to look like this, import OS, import AIO files, which comes with Quart, and then from Quart, just Quart request response, nothing too fancy. We define a static directory again, and we create an uploads directory if it doesn't exist. Then our upload endpoint is going to look like this. We get the file name, we get the path, and then we do the upload here in chunks. So for chunk in request body, we write the chunk to disk and notice that this is opened with AIO files .open. We also statically serve index HTML again. And important now we need to provide the cert file. So the certificate and the key file, the key for the TLS, and we enable HTTP2 by saying HTTP2 is equal to true. Our index HTML file looks like this. It's quite a bit of code. So if you want, you can pause or take a look at the code closer on GitHub. The essence here is we upload a file, click a button, and we have a progress bar telling us how much of the data was already transmitted. The interesting thing is we have here a transform stream and we use a half duplex stream. So we have a single direction. So we are sending data to the server in chunks, we're not getting anything back. So it's unidirectional. But as you can see, we're sending the files in chunks here. Sorry, I actually noticed a problem with my implementation here, I'm using a constant or a variable actually upload dear, it should be just uploads, because I used that before. So now we can do uv run app py, open this in the browser, choose a file to upload, for example, some of my videos, and then upload. There you go. And if I now go into my uploads, you can see there's the arch final dot MPV, uh, MP4, sorry, let's run MPV to take a look at it. There you go. Now the same thing can also be done the other way around, we can also stream our responses, for example, we could do a basic video stream. For that, let us start by importing AIO files again, also, of course, court and response. Now you have a third option here on how to define the static folder. And our endpoint here now is going to be the slash video endpoint, what we're going to do here is we have an asynchronous def inside an asynchronous def, we generate a video stream, this yields chunks of the video. So what we do here is we say, await file handle read, we read uh, one megabyte is the chunk size. So we read one megabyte here, and we just return the chunks asynchronously to the client by saying return response generate video stream, then again, simple return static return of the index file. And this one's going to be quite simple, we just have a video tag, which goes to slash video. And that's basically it. If it's not supported, we get an error message, uv run app py refresh the cache here. And what I see is 
myself here in a tutorial streamed the response or the video data here is streamed. You can see that this is the case because we're doing it in a very, very primitive way without any ranges. I cannot click anywhere here. It doesn't allow me to fast forward. I have to watch the entire stream because it's loaded chunk by chunk. But this can be done easily here as well with Quart. So these were just some interesting examples of what we can do with Quart. Remember, all of this is compatible with the already existing and well known way of doing things that Flask offers, for example, blueprints and so on. There's, of course, much more to cover here async lifespan hooks, we have asynchronous templating, we have middleware that we can use ASGI middleware and more. So if you guys are interested in Quart, if this video performs well, I can think about making a crash course where we go into depth where we actually cover the different concepts and we'll learn how to build applications with Quart. But for today, I just wanted to showcase how Quart works and what you can do with it. So that's it for this video today. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. Also, if you're interested in one on one tutoring, so me teaching you stuff personally, or if you're interested in any services, you can go to my website, either to the services tab or to the tutoring tab. There you can see what I have to offer roughly and you can contact me via LinkedIn or mail. Besides that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.